Hello, and welcome to another video in the Blade series. I'm John, and this is Scott. On this week's video, we're going to discuss how nation states or terrorist organizations can use supply chain hacks to cause chaos and even worse. Mm. For those who haven't heard of this yet, Hezbollah is claiming that Israel weaponized pagers used across Lebanon and Syria. Scott, how in the world did this happen? <laughs> well, you know, this is uh, stuff that went down yesterday uh, as we record this today. And, uh, you know, essentially when we first heard about this, we kicked it around and thought about, you know, what are the possible ways that this yep. can be done? The first thing we came to mind was a malware attack. Yep. Just like what we see, you know, CrowdStrike recently and so on and so forth. And people getting, you know, ha having problems with malware, being hacked. You know, could that have done something and overheated the lithium battery, made it explode? That was one thought we had. The second thought would be, would it be possible for somebody to infiltrate the supply chain uh, where they're actually making these little pager devices mm -hmm. and put explosives inside of them and then ship them off and then be able to later on send it a code or some sort of coded message right. and explode it. So, you know, the more we talked about it and the more evidence that I picked up, uh, looking at the various videos and photos and, and commentary out there, it looks to me, and I think to most analysts out there right now, we're talking about a supply chain hack right. where there was explosives inside of these devices for months and months before somebody decided to send an activate code to them all. And they're literally, I think the count is around like 3,000 or so were out there and they were, they were sent the code and then they exploded. And didn't matter if it was on somebody's belt, somebody's hands, on a desk somewhere. Uh, it sent a text out, a message. A few seconds later, they exploded. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I know. When we were sitting there talking as part of our discussion, we were we were kind of back and forth bantering about we're old enough to remember pages, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Used to and, have them. and and that was one of our first thoughts was, oh man, you know how difficult that would be mm -hmm. to to find the programming code, go back, input that, and then they'd all have to be a similar brand and whatever. Yep. And then it didn't take very long for you very quickly to go, <laughs> I think I have an easier way to yeah. do this. Yeah. Let's do let's talk about the supply chain thing. And right. It just turns out you were right. Yeah, yeah, I you know that that's the thing, you know, we're still looking, still looking at the malware angle, might be it. Uh, but, you know, from again, from the photos we saw, if you've seen a picture or a video of a lithium battery exploding, yeah. usually there's sparks, there's smoke, and then it explodes. And a lot of heat's going on there, too. So if you had that in your hand or in your pocket or something, before it exploded, it would get way too hot and you would either drop it or run away from it or whatever. Right. That's not what we saw with these. It looked like an explosion, right. like, like some sort of explosive in there. And, you know, there's no sparks or nothing like that. Uh, so, you know, if it, if it was a malware attack, that's the way you'd have to do it, I believe, would be to attack the battery in such a way. And again, we're not seeing that right now. So it's probably the supply chain attack yeah. where explosives were inter introduced to the devices during the manufacturing process. Right. So, um, as you said, it sounds like the supply chain is the most likely mm -hmm. attack. And, and I agree with you. Like if anybody's ever had a cell phone on a battery yeah. that they're charging in their pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, it only takes a few minutes for you to realize, man, this thing's getting kind of hot. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And so to, to do what they wanted to do, I could see that being a warning. Sign. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Cause you know, if it was on your belt, you would have certainly felt that heat increase before there was any smoke and explosion. Do you give you something of a chance to get away from it? Maybe, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that's not what we're seeing. We're, something, we're seeing something that detonated like okay. a piece of explosive. Uh, and, you know, how did this happen? Well, first off, Hezbollah decided to get away from high-tech solutions like uh, smartphones and such because too many people were getting tracked and too many people were getting killed because of their smartphones. So they said, fine, let's ditch the smartphones. Let's go to these old school pagers, which are one way communication. You can't go back out. Right. So that way the pager can't tell the satellites of the network where it's at. It's only receiving information. Right. So, so there's no triangulation. Right. It's like a, a one way street on that. But what they didn't determine, and one thing they didn't do, which we'll talk about, what you need to do, for example, is to vet your vendors and make sure that you are buying devices from a tier one vendor who, who doesn't do things like, you know, put explosives in your yeah. devices. <laughs> So that's why they decided to use this as a, as a low-tech solution at first. Right. And so when you were talking about explosive charges, the mm -hmm. first thing that popped into my head, and after watching some of the videos and seeing some of the pictures, um, this doesn't sound like a warning shot. Yeah, no, not at all. You, you know, we talked about that. Is that they were just going to, is this just somebody warning the Hezbollah that we could do something? No, not at all. Especially one thing that kind of 
solidifies that thought for me is that they didn't just explode them. Yeah. They beat them first with a message that supposedly was coming from Hezbollah HQ. And so, right, they take it off, they put it to their face to read it, and then boom. That's why you're seeing a lot of people blinded, a lot of facial injuries, that kind of stuff, our hands being blown off and these sort of things with that explosion. So it was that wasn't a random decision. That was made to inflict the most damage possible. So yeah, it's not a warning. This is right. something, you know, you could truly call this an attack. Right. And something else we talked about that um, this had to have been done a long time. Yeah, that's a months and months and months. So so this yeah. to me this to me screamed I don't want to call it a weapon of last resort, mm -hmm. but it was something built to be used when they absolutely right, needed it. Right, right. And, and it could have been, too, that some speculation is, why did they do that today? Uh, well, you know, maybe they were found out. Maybe Hezbollah figured something out, knew something was fishy, and it was a, they were in a use it or lose it position. Yeah. They're either going to do it today or, or lose that capability. So could be that. I'm sure eventually we'll get more and more, you know, off-the-record comments from various nation states and so on and so forth they'll help fill in the blanks for us mm -hmm. uh but for right now you know is it over yet we've had today the day after the paper tech we had a bunch of walkie talkies just exploding yep. probably about you know a few hours ago uh, and these are two-way devices that you know walkie talkies that you know pretty dangerous because the only way they're going to work is they put them up against your head right so something exploding next to your head plus these walkie talkies are bigger so supposedly could hold a larger explosive charge too so there's a lot of that. I've heard, I've heard reports of dozens of people injured in that just today. So there's a lot going on with this right now. That's a whole other discussion because you know we we talked a little bit about how how the supply chain issue happened and mm -hmm. and uh, this morning media sources were reporting all these pagers were made by a company in uh, Taiwan, mm -hmm. which they uh, one of the a couple of news organizations got a hold of this person and said, oh no 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 we don't make those <laughs> we just sell our brand and it was actually made by. A, uh, a company in Hungary. Oh. All these pagers were now come to find out. I was looking at the Deutsches Welle uh, news site, the German news service. Mm -hmm. They went there to Hungary to look at the to meet these people, and they were they went to the address, and there's basically you know a piece of paper in a window saying here's where we're at. So could certainly be a, a threat organization. Uh, you know who really knows at this point. Uh, all of it points to that though. It looks like they on LinkedIn. There's like one person that's listed as a. Uh, as an employee, and she's got a headshot that looks like a model, and not what you're using. Very like, shell company. -ish. Yeah, very shell company. -ish. But I'm sure other people are looking into that as we speak to find out exactly what's going on. And, you know, the pager in question, if you think you have one, if you have one with the name Gold Apollo on it, and it's the AR-924 pager model, yeah, you know, might want to <laughs> no, well, I might not want to turn that one on. Take it back to where you got to see to get a refund or something. The chances are immeasurably slim there'd be a problem. But if I had the exact model, hmm, I would probably take a look. Yeah, that's good. That's good advice because it's like, <laughs> you know, w when you're sitting there thinking about it, it's like, wait a minute, well, what model pager was this? So, yeah. and speaking of pagers, the other thing we started talking about was um, we kind of joked about it at the beginning. We're older. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, for those watching this, um, what is a pager? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's one of those, it's a, it's a one way device. They're usually pretty small, just like our little microphone units here. Not that big. Uh, back in the day, you know, in the eighties or something, they were larger, more like a pack of cigarettes, if you remember what those looked like, uh, and so on and so forth. So they basically we would put, we would put these on our uh, uh, belts, and that was the way people could communicate. It's pre mobile phones and stuff. So you'd get a a message and really the early ones only did digits yep. so you would just get a, a a buzz and it would have a number on it and you were to go find a phone a landline and then call it back so and that's one of the reasons since they are lower tech than a smartphone that why Hezbollah is using those instead of the instead of the smartphone with the theory being hey we're safer this way right well you are from one one uh, you know <laughs> one position you are safer but you know the supply chain is, yeah. is what they they opened themselves up to a supply chain mm -hmm. attack by going to an older. Right. Well, this would have been a great idea for them if they would have went out instead of buying Global Atlas brand pagers right. that no one's ever heard of, buy you know a main brand. Right. Yeah, and the chances of of anybody infiltrating a large company in the United States manufacturing process it's much and, harder. Right, it's tough. So they more than likely went cheap, mm -hmm. and that's something you guys don't need to do when you're buying electronics because. When you buy something, it may not have an uh, you know explosive in it, but it may be another type of threat inside of it. Maybe poor security, maybe bat malware can come on these devices and so on. So, so that's just something when you're looking for electronics, you know, try to go with a, a name you've heard of, a, a name that's been around for a while. Yep. Um, so, 
One thing that, as I'm thinking back on what you just said a minute ago about the company being located in Hungary and, and all these other people, it sounds like they might have been inadvertently made a target. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, you would think, especially I think the Taiwanese company would have something of a target because they're they seem to really be a real company with right. real people. So you yeah, know, like, they like get, a level and a half up or right, something. Right. That's why everybody, all analysts and, and people in, in politics and so on should be careful about pointing fingers mm -hmm. because uh, you know, Hezbollah is an organization that's not shy about attacking its enemies no matter where they're at. So yeah, that's something we don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think the whole situation's over yet, one way or the other. I think there'll be a response. Uh, but you know, how many other devices are out there all over in Lebanon that have embedded explosives in them? You know, who knows? So, so I, I, I guess as we're sitting here thinking about this, this is mm -hmm. this is obviously um, uh, this is obviously a first, right? Well, not really. <laughs> uh, you know, this is a new way of doing things as far as you know, combining a you know a supply chain with explosives and that kind of thing. But you know, uh, Israel has some. Some great experience in doing some pretty unique electronic strikes. Uh, if you remember the Stuxnet uh, program, they they were able to defeat uh, that malware. They were able to get onto uh, the Iranian nuclear program, which was extremely air gapped, so it wasn't connected to the internet, so you couldn't attack it. So you actually had to get somebody on the inside to install a computer worm. And what this worm was made to do was it was introduced into a specific type of centrifuge device that they knew Iran that the Iranians used, and that centrifuge would just end up spinning itself to death. It just spin, spin too fast, fly apart, bam, all done. Set back the Iranian nuclear program by years, perhaps. So it's not the first time we've seen uh, Israel or other uh, Western companies, uh, countries, uh, you know, use some pretty sophisticated means to attack somebody physically. Yeah, that's what when when uh, I was being facetious, by the way, folks. <laughs> that was uh, that was the first thing that popped into my head. And yeah. then, like you said yeah. earlier, by buying non-name brand stuff, mm -hmm. you open yourself up to all kinds. Of yeah, things. that's the thing. You know, so when you're buying a new piece of electronics, you know, just take a take a closer closer look at the brand. You know, look at the reviews uh, and so on. And just don't go out and buy the cheapest one that's on Amazon. Yeah, that's probably going to be an unhappy situation in the end. Sometimes you may get lucky, sure. But I found, you know, the, the cheaper devices, they just don't last as long. Uh, they don't have any security that's up to date. There's other issues with it, perhaps, and that kind of thing. So you don't want to get, you know, buy a piece of electronic that has its own, you know, bomb, right? A cybersecurity issue mm -hmm. on your network. So, you know, these could be things like cameras and doorbells and smart speakers, uh, Wi-Fi access points, all these other sort of things. So you just want to keep an eye out for that and make sure that you're not getting something that could cause you damage on your network or in your pocket. Yeah, I think that's a good, it's it's sad that it happened, but I think it's a good reminder of what can happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it's an extreme reminder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, this kind of thing can happen all the time if you buy devices that just aren't up to snuff from a cybersecurity perspective. Okay, cool. Well, um, obviously, you and I will keep an eye on things. Absolutely. If anything new comes up, we'll put out another video or mm -hmm. some social media. But um, to wrap things up, I think it's, it's important to remember a few things. So, and this is going to sound like some old, you know, McGruff <laughs> warning here. Don't accept devices from strangers. You know. um, keep your technology up to date and only buy from reputable vendors. Yeah. I think that's the big takeaway. Yeah, that's the thing. Because, you know, just think about it, you know, especially people like to buy a lot of electronics on eBay, for example. So, so you're not buying it from a company, you're buying it from another person. Mm -hmm. So just recognize that, you know, these things can be tampered with. You know, and, and just realize that's the case. And if you have the technological expertise to be able to identify a problem, then yeah, go right ahead and buy it and open it up and see what's inside, of course. But, you know, most consumers, just be careful. As John said, go with those tier one vendors and, and take it from there. Awesome. Well, Scott, thanks for your expertise. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Always and, a blast. And thanks to all of you for watching. This is John and Scott from Blade. Take it easy. <laughs>